What's good YouTube? This is Al B and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Innovation Launch Key 49 and how I use it in FL Studio. Now the way I use it is not what you will see most people show you or what you will find online. Most people will talk to you about how to use it inside of the FPC and I'm talking about how you use your drum pads. I like to use my drum pads just like you like to use any drum machine to you know kind of lay out your beat your boom boom pat whatever have you the problem is with fpc you don't have your midi data separate and for me personally that's like i don't like that workflow at all i, I need my midi data separate so i have full control and the fpc kind of takes some of that away when it comes to you know pushing everything to one track so the method i'm going to show you is a custom template that i made it took me some time to figure it out but i got it right so pad one would trigger channel one, pad two would trigger channel two, pad three would trigger channel three, so forth and so on. And then for your actual keys on the keyboard, um, your keys will then actually play whatever instrument you have highlighted inside of your channel selector. You can let your keys first in loop record, you know, while it's looping or what have you. And then you can lay your drums and you don't ever have to touch a dog you can just do it all from the keyboard and i'm gonna show you all this you're gonna love it man i promise so without further ado let's get into it yeah all right guys so what i want to do is first show you how this template works in fl studio so you guys can see the value um and, and then within just a few minutes of getting this set up you you can be able to, to really enjoy the template so let me start out by showing you how it works the first thing is to understand that every pad um, will be set to a channel. So pad one triggers channel one, pad two triggers channel two, pad three triggers channel three, so forth and so on. In my case, I have an 808 in channel one. So when I press pad one, the 808 is, is hit. One thing to note is that it's always going to trigger at C5. Okay, don't worry too much about it because for your drums, typically, typically that's where you want to trigger anyway. If you want to pitch your drums, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But um, for the time being, it's going to trigger C5 in each channel. 808s in channel 1, so pad 1 triggers 808. Pad 2 triggers channel 2, my kick. Pad 3 triggers channel 3, my snare. Pad 4 triggers channel 4, my hi-hat, my open hi-hat. And in channel 6, I have a loop, um, loop sample. I'm sorry, I have a chopped piano sample in, in channel 6. And that's why you hear that sound when I press my sixth pad. Now, in the channel selector, you would typically want to you want to highlight or select the channel that you want your keys to control. Usually that's going to be an instrument, you know, or VST like a like silent or omnisphere or, you know, Nexus or something like that. Um, in my case, it's just a piano sample and I have it chopped up. So I'm going to play it like I would a VST. Uh, uh. Okay, that's what I want my keys to control. So in my case, I'm going to select my my sample channel that has my sample chopped up across my keys. That's the instrument that I want to play with my keys and my pads can still play my drums. So let's show you how you can actually use this in your workflow. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm going to add some drums. Turn my metronome off. Okay. Now I'm going to add my own hi-hat. Here we go. Here we go. So you can see how quickly I got down an idea. I still have my MIDI data separate. So when I go to drop this inside of a pattern, you know, and I go, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm about to do. I'm about to split by channel. And now when I go to a range, I still have all my sounds separated 
versus the FPC method where it would put all this kind of in one one MIDI channel. Let me start showing you guys how you how you can set this up on your own um, and how I did that. OK, guys, so one of the first things you, you need to do is um, download the, the template using the link in the description. Now, number one, make sure you guys watch this video to the end because people will try to do this without listening carefully and it'll be a little frustrating. Follow the video to the end. Listen carefully. I'm going to you guys. It, it'll work. All right. Um, the, the once you download the, the template, it's going to be a zip folder that's going to include uh, probably three files. I haven't made the zip folder yet, but it's going to be three files. One file is going to be the template that I just showed you and how I used it. A second file will be the same template, except it will be velocity sensitive. So when you play your drum pad, when you play your drum pad on the keyboard, you will be able to control the velocity of your drum of your drum hits. All right. So just know there's going to be three files, the, the velocity sensitive template, the template that is not velocity sensitive, and then a third file, which is going to be a readme file that I will ask you guys to please check before you reach out to me with issues. I have no problem helping, but I'm trying to you know make it as easy as possible for everybody. So make sure you check out that readme file as well before you hit me with issues. You got the template downloaded. Boom, you unzip the folder and I'm going to start the first template that is not velocity sensitive will be this is Al B green red. OK, the green and red is just the color of the pads from left to right and how I programmed it through the script um, or through the template file. You're going to copy that template into local disk C program files, image line, FL Studio 20 system, hardware specific innovation launch key mk2 i'm going to copy this into here boom okay this is al b green red i'm going to pull out page six because i personally um i personally didn't like that template that came default so that's the one that i decided i could overwrite i didn't find a way where you can do more than nine templates so i have to pull out the sixth template page six pull that template out and I'm going to rename this is Al B green red to page six dot S C R. Okay. And that's going to end up being the sixth template stored on that, that the keyboard pulls when you go into FL studio. Okay. Now let's go into FL studio. Boom. And your keyboard should already um, be recognized. So I, I haven't actually enabled that custom template that you just downloaded and put in that uh, directory. Um, I haven't actually enabled that template on the keyboard yet. I'm going to show you how to do that. The main thing I'm trying to show you here is that your keyboard should already be working. And that's how you'll know that the keyboard is recognized properly. If you're having issues, then let's make sure we follow the rest of these steps. So go to options, MIDI settings. <clears throat> and make sure you have the launch key MK249 selected as your output. I do like to enable send master sync. Then make sure you have the input as launch key MK249 as well. So this is uh, the output launch key MK249 input launch key MK249 controller type innovation launch key MK2 keyboard. Okay. <clears throat> um, and that should automatically fill in port 220. If it doesn't, then make sure you look at my port numbers and just make these all match up, guys. OK, it's key <laughs> that the launch key MK249 has one channel number. In this case, it's 220 and that the the second one, which you'll see like a performance keyword has 225. Those need to be separate. But the, the launch key MK249 should be 220 in the input and in the output. OK. Port 220, I believe this is automatically populated. If it's not, again, copy these numbers, guys, and make sure everything lines up. Um, the biggest thing that you definitely need to make sure you, you do, which I know does not get done automatically, is set your Omni Preview channel to 16. Okay? If you don't do this, it will not work. <clears throat> so, boom, my keyboard's recognized. I have Omni Preview channel 16. Okay. Now, FL Studio is ready. OK, to receive the keyboard. 
Now back on my MIDI controller, back on the launch key, I have to select that template to, that we just uh, downloaded and put in the right directory. So to do that, you gotta press the rewind and fast forward buttons together. The bottom row of lights on the drum pad light up. Now we did page six, so our template is the sixth template, okay? Going from left to right, you do not count the first pad. So this is like zero. So I need to get to, to template six, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's actually the seventh pad because you don't count the first one, okay? And you'll know you selected the right template because it'll be a gradient of colors from green to red. And that's just because of how I programmed it in the template. And this is template is not velocity sensitive. So every time I, it always strikes at the same velocity. Um, and now you are, you're good to go, man. Please guys, if you found this helpful, drop a like, man, drop a comment so that other people can find this too. And it's really all the support I need from you guys um, to keep bringing you guys things like this to really drive your workflow up. Once again, this is Alby. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit me up on Instagram, man. Um, you know, email me if you have trouble. Reach out to me, guys. You know, I hope you enjoyed the video. Much love. If you haven't already, man, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button so other people can find this video that you probably found very helpful, I'm betting. And drop a comment. If you got questions or you liked it and it will help your workflow out, man, let me know. Let others know so they can see it and they can get the same benefit you did. I hope it was good. Until next time, y'all, this is Al B on Instagram, on Twitter. Hit me up, man. Love to hear from y'all. Peace.